Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another 3D printing video. We are getting back into it and exploring SLA DLP resin printing. Now this isn't anything that replaces the introduction and in-depth videos within the 3D printing YouTube community. Very worthwhile checking out and going into great detail. Those guys are just absolutely fantastic but more an introduction for scale modeling and our applications as well as myself are learning and exploring this with you guys and reporting my findings what we are used to as a community level and from my content is additive printing or plastic extrusion printing where a spool of plastic is heated up and melted into blobs the mechanisms work on an XY axis on servo motors or pulleys and plastic goes through a heat exchange. Quite a bit can go wrong. We know what they look like, some in cases, some are out in the open at various bed sizes. We're not going to be talking about this, though for those who are playing along and still looking at uh, wanting to get an additive uh, plastic extrusion printer, the Prusa brand seems to be uh, doing some really fine work and getting uh, a lot better detail and structures out for our uses. A product definitely worth looking out for. Stereo lithiographic resin printing pretty much holds a bed of resin, pulls a model out. A lot of misconceptions, pretty solid models out of solid resin. A lot of people believe that it is quite brittle but it depends on the thickness and the shape of the print. We see these uh, very interesting web-like sculptures being straight away pulled out of a liquid and imagine them to be hollow with a filling like the additive printing. But once I dug in deeper, I found out it's a completely different can of worms. We've got two different type of uh, printing styles though generally the core basics are the same SLA and DLP now for the sake of content creating selling Google search results it's all called SLA let's see what they have in common first both machines utilize a tank full of UV resin the resin reacts to UV light and hardens it has a single direction bed that is pulled out layer by layer and a clear screen at the very bottom. Underneath that screen, depending on the UV light source, is which style of printer. The only moving part is the bed that comes out, one axis Z axis motor, and everything else is reliant on how the image of resin is printed. The bed is only however resolution you want away from the screen and only the resin between the bed and the clear screen is hardened. It keeps doing it step by step until we have a fairly detailed model. What potentially can go wrong is the chemical imbalance of the resin, the motor pulling the bed out, leaking and the light source pretty much a lot easier to operate than all the issues with the many moving parts of additive printing. That is in the advantage where the disadvantage is the material is three to five times more. But both should be used together rather than one is better than the other. Now for the difference of the two. SLA is a laser diode. It tracks a little round dot to create a shape, thus not leaving any pixels or steps behind. The only steps that are visible is the z-axis, where DLP is a screen or a combination leading up to a projection where it builds up in pixels depending on how fine the resolution, the output image is projected and can leave little tiny blocks. There are also many different makes, models and methods to DLP with mirrors, projection as well as lenses to clear up and sharpen the image. 
this goes from a basic screen with the budget models and getting more complex and bigger the more upmarket and detailed the machine gets. The two styles also have a time difference. SLA requires the laser to move around for every layer and time is consumed by how wide the volume of the model is as well as tall. Where DLP it flashes the shape of a screen so no matter how wide or skinny it is the time only depicts by how thin the sliced layers are, how long the exposure of the light to the resin layer and how tall it is. Looking at a typical SLA printer, you're looking at a device that would completely consume a desk all the way to a room sized object. They range anywhere around the 10 to half a million dollar mark. Yet these are not exactly out of our grasp and their quality prints can be achieved fairly cheaply. Services such as Zeal Printing in Melbourne, Australia and Shapeways US, I suppose other countries in Europe and Asia, will take prints on commission by uploading it on their website and getting a quote through slicing. You will get a whole range of materials and for anything that's quite large and relatively detailed for resin casting, garage kitting, prototyping or even making molds, it's a pretty good option to explore and not write off just because it's a professional piece of equipment. Shapeways actually markets quite heavily to the modeling community and does do fairly cheap aftermarket parts for 35th and whole 72nd models from time to time on their cloud service or upload service. Now we're looking at the consumer entry level machines. They market around the two to five thousand dollar mark. Big brands such as Formlab and Flashforge. They are arguably DLP, digital light processing, and it will be uh, pointed out quite frequently when referring to the prints, buying the machines, or in the comment sections. They are quite uh, suitable, however, due to their price, more targeted at small businesses, prototyping, artists, that sort of thing, and small businesses will also lease out the machines for people to uh, buy prints or use them, which is also a good way to get access for a few prints, though due to the use and very slow print time, extremely expensive. When buying and using these machines, you need to research the size, availability of resin to where you're currently located, getting shipped to, as well as especially any consumable parts like the clear screen or other bits. And if you can also get your hands on those or just pre stock up on them if you choose to own, operate and not commission. Owning one is a decision that do you plan on doing many, many prints, cutting and constantly producing out work, even making money or selling it, or are you going to commission a few 3D models, go on uh, Thingiverse, download a few things and grow tired, bored or out of it all together. It's something you definitely need to figure out. Now the reason why I'm making this video is exploring the very recent bottom end of the market. Under 500 USD, cheap materials coming out of China, universal parts, most of them featuring on Kickstarter or some sort of funding venture. What came very highly recommended and good feedback from the 3D printer community and industry is the Anycubic sitting at the $500 mark and coming with everything in the package. It virtually works straight out of the box and ideal for the modeler, scale hobbyist and whatnot. Still worth looking in further detail regarding reviews, size, access and materials, all that sort of thing, if it's appropriate for your use from file to print. What I've bought and will be using heavily on this channel is the Spark Maker. 
This had a very rough introduction to the community. Fairly successful Kickstarter, followed by a reign of very four poor reviews from faults and machines not quite working being dispatched to people who bought them. I found the support and the community who uses it to be fairly friendly and admits that with some of its uh, faults to iron out, with a bit of work it can be polished to a fairly useful machine, though how long its working life is a bit unknown. Parts can be replaced and uh, considered as consumables. Later models that has been uh, reviewed have been quite fine and what I've uh, bought and used straight out of the box even a little hard to use and understand due to coherent and simple instructions. What I found from the Facebook group as well as reviewing and tutorial YouTube videos was more than sufficient to get it working under my own resources. It's low price also discounts the fact that you do need to buy cards and resin and extra bits and pieces. It does not quite work straight out of the box. Again, you'll have to do your own research and look at reviews to decide if this is the machine you wish to enter in the community or not. The last is the Ono, or used to be known as the Olo. This is a failed Kickstarter that hasn't quite reached market yet one of the first to be pitched as the cheapest resin 3d printer that works off your smartphone and utilizing its screen processing time everything and only really just a tank with a micro motor i'm not going to completely discount it yet though my pledge has not come in yet still quite a few bits and pieces to iron out and whatnot being a new company product all that uh, jazz that if it is to be successful and hit for market and embraced by the 3d printing or scale modeling community it should only be around the $200 mark if you introduce your own tablet phone or whatnot hopefully there'll also be larger machines that can go on larger tablets there is quite a bad press unfortunately people not receiving their pledge and from what I've seen in um, test shots and whatnot depending on the screen or phone you use some prints can be fairly undesirable due to the quality of the screen in your phone so I'm a bit disappointed and kind of abandoned this and wanting to start using it now Let's talk about the UV sensitive resin. It is a liquid form, just like epoxy resin, has a lot of the same advantages, disadvantages, definitely carcinogenic, definitely harmful for children, not good for your skin, not good for breathing in. With all of these factors, you don't quite want to use it in your home and it is uh, far more dangerous being a spill hazard and all that compared to your additive printer which is just practically a fire or a burn risk. Either or all, definitely not a toy for a child to play with. With the active open market, it is very competitive. You have to consider the NM rating or exposure rating to how strong your machine exposes resin and does this resin fall into that range. Besides that, most of it's just colored and rigid. A lot like the spool material you use for additive printing, there is a various different type of uh, materials that can go extra rigid be really fine for mechanical applications or quite flexible almost like a rubber or crystal clear. These sort of things you need to further research, try and utilize through your machine if your machine is able to handle it. There are settings when you dictate each layer and how thin the layer in being uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.2 or 1 could set the exposure time to how long it's going to be hit by UV, how strong it's going to be, all that sort of thing. They all have advantages and disadvantages, best to be played with. 
I have noticed operating my machine it does have quite a significant noxious smell that you definitely do not want in the household and people who are quite sensitive to fumes will most likely react. The process of doing an SLA DLP print once you acquire a STL file the same files are taken as additive printing those slices in a different manner as our resolution is far more finer you put the setting of exposure how long it's uh, being exposed for for each layer and how many layers according to how fine the resolution the finer the layer with each exposure being around the 10 15 second mark at least for my machine will extend the period of time it takes to make the model. The very first uh, exposure is going to be a lot longer to make sure that the uh, base or the raft is solidly cemented onto the bed. Your model is inverted upside down and comes out from the bottom top. Next you inspect the machine, leveling of the bed making sure it's flat up against the screen is fairly important for good adherence of the raft second is the inspection of the screen to make sure there isn't any dirt marks wipes lint anything like that any sort of uh, damage or debris on that lens will affect the print as that will not translate to your actual model and practically mask the light and if you're masking the light you're going to get holes dimples bubbles in your model so you make sure you sufficiently clean it and some machines i understand uh, treat this as a consumable where it needs to be repaired or replaced as it gets damaged from filling the tank and doing multiple prints after checking that fill it up with water to make sure it doesn't leak you don't want to leak resin clean it out sufficiently add resin ideally add resin while the bed is in the tank as to not overflow when the bed does get plunged once the model sliced up you've synced up the machine with g-code or added the sd card on or offline doesn't matter and it's uh, ready to play you either have to close the enclosure or uh, put the clear colored seal over the tank and machine as the resin reacts to UV and we have natural UV from some artificial light sources and definitely from the Sun this can cause the resin to go off going back to the resin its biggest disadvantage from spools is it does have a shelf life of six months to one year depending on how it's stored located sealed it can go off I'm not sure how it goes off and how it affects your print but it's something I'll have to explore for sure resin is three to five times more in weight compared to the plastic uh, spools far more denser and your model will be solid unless you model it to be hollow or have have some sort of honeycomb inside you do have to uh, consider things like rafts as well as uh, supports if you have a hollow inside or uh, quite a complex shape. This goes through the slicing CAD process. As a modeler artist I would recommend that once you've done your quota of printing and you've got some resin left over it's getting close to its use by date or you have no intention of printing in the future have quite a few diorama items on file and print them out things like fuel cans and whatnot that we use in the future it's better to have them sitting on standby that you can utilize on your work than pulling out some resin that's gone absolutely nasty and completely unusable as each layer takes time to explode and come out don't be surprised if a print is anywhere between two to ten plus hours supervise it of course as issues can occur it will come out upside down on the bed out of the resin can be easily removed chop off the uh, supports and whatnot the idea of the uh, raft and the supports is you want the supports as thin as 
humanly possible for easy cutting and not so much a waste of material the surface does have to be dealt with as they're still stepping but you'll notice that the model is still quite soft and sticky to the touch should be handled by gloves at this stage giving it a solid uh, bath and clean in 99% alcohol I found isopropic alcohol to work quite sufficiently will remove any excess when you're done printing you need to remove the resin from the tank not quite going to store there you can reclaim it and reuse it from what I've read online probably best to store it in a separate container from your fresh stuff if prints don't go too well and you need to use a very fresh source there will be some residue on the bed as well as in the tank I personally found spraying isopropic alcohol on the surfaces and wiping them with clean tissue or toilet paper up then times until the uh, clear screen is nice and flawless and put the cover back on for storage now your model is a chemical that's gone from a liquid to a solid after a clean still going to be quite soft especially if it's really really fine detail or you're going to use it for a mechanical component and want it as rigid as humanly possible what I've noticed is people flash a UV light on it for a few minutes or put it in a UV tank ideally you can put it in a container or expose it to direct sunlight if you've got a fair amount of time from my understanding uh, this curing process from center out could take quite a while might be worth just leaving it out or in a tank for days up to a week for a nice solid usable functional piece I don't know the exact science of overexposure of UV on resin if it goes uh, brittle or maybe the color might change the form whatnot there are professional proper manufactured UV tanks that look visually quite spectacular though reigning quite a high price there's countless tutorials out there of making budget tanks through clear containers eBay bought UV lights or even party disco lights that might be laying around the place my favorite one is the little cases for hardening nail polish or UV reactive nail polish off eBay or $2 shops for next to nothing I actually do have one of those floating around costs next to nothing to have a full grasp of all of this I'll need to finish my first print process it and review it in video form here with my spark maker what I did create is a very small 4x5 centimeter tachikoma robot spider a few mistakes have definitely been made on it uh, the supports are far too thick and for some reason the raft lifted slightly this did not affect or deform the model at all which might have happened after it was pulled out of the tank regardless this was probably a very ambitious model for a first time print very impressed with the detail and how thin the antennas especially the claws are I can see where it's stepped but I chose to do a fairly rough print quickly at 0.5 millimeter resolution I can dial that back qu quite a bit so it's about 0.2 roughly how the motor would definitely work now there is also fault finding when models don't go quite well due to lack of supports bad models your machine malfunctioning generally there's really two things that can go horribly wrong that the screen glitches out or something happens that it misses a layer and the top bit is not cemented to the bottom bit and it's sort of cut in half and just ends printing there or worse the other half of the print or a bunch of uh, discs of uh, plastic is building up at the bottom of the bed another thing that can happen is the bed stops moving and it keeps uh, curing resin on the one step growing a ring around it this could be a factor of uh, the screen or lights emitting not working ideally the uh, clear bottom of the tank having some sort of fault or not being clear enough that the light is transmitting across the resin being bad 
or the model not properly being supported to the bed falling off the bed overly heavy supports not being thick enough ideally you do want your supports to be as thin as possible though i suppose if the model's really heavy and not sticking to the bed in that wet in form and not exposing enough would drop in a lot of problems it does recommend besides tuning fixing your machine clearing the tank using a new resin also includes a longer exposure time and allowing a longer print as humanly possible now with the 3d printing community they're always looking for that perfect straight out of the tank finish now once you're all said and done we've got a solid block of resin or hollow resin would work a lot like a resin kit allow the maximum amount of time to dry and harden from my understanding when you're actually casting off resin if it's still soft and you're rubbing sandpaper on it you're going to scar it and make it all funny once you've achieved quite a hard touch to the surface sand away prime away paint away as you usually do there is no release agent though i suppose the cleaning it in the alcohol will make sure that there is no more wet resin on the surface to begin with each supports a bit like a sprue and you remove nubs as you normally would on a styrene kit uh, of course care taken with our resin dust as you sand this concludes everything i've learnt so far some of it might not be up to date correct or reflects what a experience resin 3d printer would come across i've talked to a few friends learned from them tutorials everything as far as i can got a lot of printing to do with my machine for the salt mines project as well as a few models for myself and parts to add to kits and whatnot as i've uh, planned for many years the pro concept of cutting models for this printer opposed to additive printers as long as a wall is as thick as a millimeter the sky is pretty much the limit as long as there's not too much detail that you can sand rounded surfaces and whatnot i'm also playing with a piece that was printed professionally from a proper sla machine from zeal printing a review of a model from that will appear on this channel shortly all that said and done thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content we're going to have more regular 3d printing content here for sure as well as an update to the up mini making the heat bed more efficiently for the outer part of the salt mine molds have a look how i play for that for the people playing at home with the same 3d printer all the references of this video that I've found in my research will be in the description section, including a link to the YouTube video making the UV tank and uh, details about zeal printing and shape waves for Australia and the US in getting your own works printed. Catch you guys next time and stay tuned for further content. See you later.